friends and welcome. My name is Dr. Heather Carden and I'm coming to you live from Ask Dr. Heather. So what we do here at Ask Dr. Heather is you actually drop your questions down below, send me questions through either through um, Instagram or through Facebook or through Twitter or through my blog. And when I get a whole bunch of questions on the same topic, I'm like, it's time to talk about it because there's a whole bunch of noise. Hey, Nicole, thanks for joining me. There's a whole bunch of noise out there, a whole bunch of confusing things that people simply just get uh, confused about. They don't understand sometimes it actually paralyzes them on their journey towards better health hey Justin thanks for joining me so this topic tonight is the one that I had a lot of people have been asking me about like they've heard especially my patients like oh I have gallbladder issues I want to do a keto diet I'm hearing everybody else or just a low carb diet this was one of the most popular topics when we did low carb keto KC at low carb USA one of the most common topics people ask all the time I want to do a ketogenic diet. I want to do a low carb diet. I want to cut out the carbohydrates. I want to elevate my healthy fats, but I'm afraid because I don't have my gallbladder. I'm afraid because I've had gallbladder symptoms. I'm afraid because I have a history of gall this. I'm afraid because my family has a history of gallbladder that. Well, guess what, guys? There's no essential carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are what's making you sick. So when we talk about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, that's because of too many carbohydrates. We talk about diabetes, that's too many carbohydrates. So let's just go back a big step and talk about what the gallbladder is. It's a tiny little hollow organ that's actually optimal, uh, optional. You can actually live your whole entire life without your gallbladder, believe it or not, but it was put there for a reason, so we should try to keep it if we can. It actually just stores um, bile, it helps concentrate it, and when you eat a little bit of fat, it just squeezes it out into the small intestine to help you break it down. So the liver actually makes all the bile that we need. So if you've had to have your gallbladder removed, it's okay, you can still do a low carb, high fat ketogenic diet, or low carb diet, whichever one that you choose, but you just have to make sure you're eating clean, healthy fats. What happens is, is that people actually either go on a really low fat, diet for a very long time and then they try to jump into a really high fat diet they're doing lots of processed fats lots of cheeses lots of nuts and the gallbladder has not been squeezing out little fats into the small intestine because you've been doing low fat it's been storing that fat there so the liver's been making the gall um liver's been making the bile, the bile's been stored in the gallbladder and it's just been kind of sitting there. All of a sudden you have this huge big fatty meal, you have 10 pieces of bacon, you have a day full of cheese, you're gonna do this big fat fast, all of a sudden you do this huge big paradigm shift, you forgot to tell your gallbladder you're gonna do this, and after about your third or fourth day, it freaks out because it has not been using a little bit of that bile, it hasn't been squeezing it out into the small intestine, you've been doing this now this big fat meal, then you have a gallbladder attack or those get gallstones because it's been sitting there because it has been being used throughout the last weeks or decades or years but a normal healthy person eats moderate fats every day or high fats let's just say moderate fats you eat low carb or moderate carbs and then the gallbladder just squeezes out a little bit throughout this and into the small intestine to help you break down fats but you're eating things like trans fats which we all ate in the 70s and 80s because that's what's being manufactured into our foods even into the 90s even with enough gall bile, your body still couldn't break that down. So it's still getting stuck in there and causing some placking. So what happens is when you go on a ketogenic diet or low carb diet, again, you weren't eating any fats at all, kind of freaks out your gallbladder. It's not really sure what to do and it dumps too much at one time and you can have a gallbladder attack. Or maybe you've already had your gallbladder removed because you're one of those people who either had some pre-existing conditions because you had eaten too many of the wrong fats, which is processed fats, lunch meats, hydrogenated fats, a lot of those low fats fat package meals had a lot of that kind of trans fat weird fat our body couldn't recognize it it couldn't break it down actually kind of clogged up our gallbladder so for many reasons um, people had issues with that sometimes during pregnancy it's more prone to Native Americans people who are more overweight who have eaten more highly processed foods more fried foods all those type of things can actually be more prone to having some type of gallbladder issue or gallbladder attack but what I want to let you know is that oh, I'm gonna read this to you because I found these stats today that we're finding actually used to be people over 60 generally had gallbladder issues. Now we're finding it more in people who are 40 and under and teenagers. It's estimated that 20 to 25 million Americans have gallbladder disease. That's half a million people are having their gallbladder removed every year. That can actually be avoided 
by eating a healthy diet that is high in fiber, so lots of veggies, healthy meats, don't dip them in, fry them, and coat them in sugar, so skip the barbecue sauce, skip the ketchup, and don't deep fry and stuff, and eating healthy fats like nuts and seeds, not hydrogenated fats, not fats, again, that are deep fried in corn oil or canola oil, things like that. That's things your body can't break down once it gets high heated and processed. Your gallbladder has to overwork itself because every single meal is the same thing that happens in a diabetic. You're having to overwork your gallbladder with fried food all the time, whether it's those packaged microwavable breakfast meals or it's a drive through lunch or it's a drive through dinner or microwavable dinner or it's a fried dinner. It's just too hard on the body or you're looking at condiments that have a lot of those those same type of different oils in there. The great thing is they're trying to take some of those out. But the top of the topic is, yes, it is safe to be on if you've had your gallbladder removed or you have gallbladder disease. What you need to do is you have to ditch the dairy. You have to ditch the fried food. You can't do the what they call the dirty keto. You have to just do a real clean, like it's designed to do, ketogenic low-carb diet. So what does that mean? Eat a lot of vegetables. Vegetables are like Brillo pads, especially raw vegetables or broiled vegetables. You should be having anywhere from four to six to seven cups of vegetables a day. Vegetables, when you put them in your body, they work like Brillo pads. They scoot out all of that gunk in your intestines and your arteries. I put some big pictures here. So when you're eating vegetables, this is our actually our artery, it's actually cleaning all that stuff out. Raw vegetables do that. So the more hardier they are, the more fiber. So actually cleaning and grabbing all those toxins, all the excess fat, and moving that out of your body. So we want to make sure you're eating enough vegetables. A lot of people make the mistake that they're eating cheese and nuts and meat and doing more of a carnivore dairy diet and calling it a keto low-carb diet than actually eating a well-balanced diet that actually is high in healthy fats where it's hemp and nuts and seeds and chia and plants and oils and things like that that are real food. Your body's meant to digest that. Remember, we come into this world in the state of ketosis, so our body knows how to break down healthy fats. And things like MCT oil actually lower our cholesterol. They don't raise our cholesterol. And I'm gonna make a shift here a minute and talk about cholesterol, because I wanna to, to really clarify that, because so many people say, I can't do the diet. I want to do it because I see all these amazing results, all these incredible, incredible, incredible before and afters, before and nows, but that's okay. That's where exogenous ketones come into play. If you want to just do a low carb clean diet or more of a paleo style diet, we're still having some sweet potatoes, maybe some black rice in there. You know, you want to have more Brussels sprouts, more beets and things like that, that are a little more glycemic index or higher sugar index and have a little more protein. I think that's where most people really want to have really switch that pyramid on a ketogenic diet is having more protein. So it's kind of a modified Atkins, but still not doing too many pork rinds, not having bacon every single day, not over buttering it, but rotating through those plant fats and having lots of greens and things like that and having a little bit extra protein. I knew, I know that's what most people miss when I'm looking at their food diaries, but still having a couple cups of vegetables at every single meal that you're eating. So whether you're doing two meals a day or three meals a day, you're getting a couple cups of vegetables in there. You can add those exogenous is ketones so you still get the benefits of ketones for all that amazing brain health the thermogenic health the gut health the sleep health still get all that benefit without having to deep dive into a deep ketogenic diet and raise those fats if that makes you nervous about your gallbladder or your liver so that's the great thing because exogenous ketones don't have any fats in them they're the byproducts so when you break down healthy fats like avocados they break down into a salt called a ketone salt whether it's acetoacetate acetone or beta hydroxybutyrate so that's that's a great bonus or someone who maybe is a vegan or a vegetarian who has to have a higher carbohydrate diet has a difficult time they absolutely can be done difficult time maintaining ketosis or ketogenesis now they can actually use exogenous ketone salts to actually maintain that ketogenic diet so I'm gonna make a little shift here because the second question was how do I keep my cholesterol within range on a ketogenic or low carb diet without making too big of a shift? Because I know everyone says, oh, LDL, those are the lousy cholesterol. Well, we kind of were taught that in school, but the LDLs aren't the whole story of that. So I want to make sure that we're talking the right language when we talk about cholesterol because it's really not, cholesterol is our friend. We talk about cholesterol. I think in elderly people, cholesterol needs to be around 200. That's what the numbers are saying. When I was in school, the number was like 295 then we loaded it down to 245 274 then 249 then 225 or 224 now it's 199 what are we seeing happening with brain health what are we seeing happening with heart health all those diseases are on the rise 
Why? We're not having enough healthy fats. We need 60% healthy fats in our brain. So I don't like seeing it when someone comes in and their total cholesterol is 120 or 130. We know that the geriatric population, I'm 50 something, I should say the generation over 50, that we know that we need to have healthy cholesterol because it breaks down and makes our DHEA, which is our anti-aging hormone, also makes hormones or steroid hormones like it makes cortisol, also makes testosterone, also makes DHEA and pregnenolone and estrogen, all the estradiols. People think, well, once I'm done through menopause or andropause, I don't need those hormones anymore. Not true. You still need DHEA. You still need cortisol. You still need pregnenolone. You still need all those healthy hormones. Your brain needs to make those. We also know that the LDLs are not all bad. It is the size of the particle. It's not necessarily the particle number. I brought a diagram here from the office. I have a better one, but we used to just think it was a number. We focus on the LDL number. All they do is look at the number and say, well, if the number is too big, like the LDL number is too large, a lousy one, then we know we just need to lower it down, take a medication for it. What we do is we know that this is a cell wall. And so if they're big, the LDLs are big, then they bounce right through and go through the cell wall. If the LDLs are little, then they go through the mesh. And when they get through the mesh, this is my next picture. When they get through the mesh, they fall down through the mesh. And then when it gets too heavy and too thin, it wears the mesh, the wall down. This is your capillary, your blood vessel wall. This is where we get placking. And then when it gets so thin and so heavy, a placking can disrupt and cause a clot. That's what a clot dis looks like. And when a clot dis dislodges, it causes a stroke. But LDLs aren't all bad because again, in their big buoyancy, they can go through the cell wall, but they're the transporters. We call them the bus. So the LDLs are not just the lousy guys, they are the bus. In small sizes, they're bad, they fall through. In big one, we call them the bus because they're the passengers. They transport cholesterol. We just talked about cholesterol, breaks down into all our sex hormones, also our anti-aging hormones. They also carry CoQ10 they carry our phospholipids. Phospholipids outline all of our cell wall, also carry our triglycerides. They also carry our fat soluble vitamins, so A, E, D, and K. So they're important bus, they call them the bus buses. They're important carriers of some of those molecules that we need inside our body. So make sure when you're checking with your doctor on your good and bad cholesterol that you're looking at all those numbers. So total cholesterol breaks down, as we talked about, into those sex hormones and steroid hormones. LDLs, it's a particle size, not just the number that matters. And the HDLs are the happy guys, so you need to make sure the happy guys, the HDLs, are a bigger number. But again, you need to make sure you're looking at that particle size because it does matter. There definitely are some natural things you can do to lower those, but know that a lot of people say, I went a keto diet, and then what happened is my numbers went up. Well, that's gonna happen because if you're a diabetic, when you check your blood, you're gonna have a lot of blood sugar in your, in your blood when you're checking it because your body's using glucose glucose, right, for, for energy. When you're on a keto diet, you're going to find more fat in there because your body's using that. So your LDLs, the bus system, is carrying more triglycerides, carrying more of that for energy for your body. So you're going to find more of that there. So hopefully that helps kind of just bring around some of those questions that you may have about, is it safe for me to do a low-carb diet? Is it safe for me to cut out those carbohydrates? We know that when we're looking at the triglycerides, which are mainly indicative of sugar, so triglycerides plus LDLs, especially the smaller ones, those are the ones that stick together and cause that placking. So when you're looking at also the gallbladder, the same thing happens for non-alcoholic body liver disease. It's the carbohydrate load that causes the NAFLAC on the liver. It's not the healthy fats, but if you're eating trans fat, then those absolutely can do that. I do want to take a second just to welcome everybody and thank you for joining. I always want to say, let me know where you're joining from. If you have questions, drop them down below. These questions came from about 30 different people about asking is that, can I do this? Can I do a low carb diet? Can I eat healthy fats if I have a gallbladder issue? Can I eat healthy fats if I have a liver issue? Can I eat fats if I have a cholesterol issue? Are they okay for me? The answer is yes, but it's the right fats you need to eat because of healthy fats like MTCs, actually, which come from um, coconut oil, actually can lower your cholesterol. Olive oil can actually lower your overall cholesterol level and help your heart health. We know that MCT oil that actually comes from coconut oil is antiparasitic, it's antifungal, it can actually break down and give your body energy. Lots of benefits come from those healthy fats. We talk about the other alternative, which is sugar, 
What comes from sugar? Well, you may say, oh, an orange has vitamin C. Well, a red pepper has more vitamin C. So you need to kind of look at this for that when you're talking about the energy source and making that shift in your diet and not maybe not be afraid. Go to Dr. Google. I like to call that or go right here to ask Dr. Heather and I'll help you kind of sort out some of that information. But there's always a, always a choice when it comes to that and make small little shifts like we talked about in the beginning. So if you just joined us, again, let us know you're joining from and please absolutely share this. This is meant to be shared with people. It's meant to be educational, help you better understand what's happening when people are like, oh, I went keto and I lost all this weight. It's more than just about losing fat. It's about brain cognition. It's about brain health. It's about memory. It's about reaction time. It's about recovery from day-to-day -day activity. So that's anti-aging. When I talk about or slowing down that father clock in the aging time, recovering from your sports so you can have a PR the next day or whatever your workout may be, and being the better version of yourself when you go to bed tonight and you recover from whatever stress you put your body through today. Because we all are exposed to stress foods if we dine on sugar and we eat glucose causes stress and tears down our body and if we don't eat the right foods like we don't eat the right fats to help make our body make hormones we're going to be depleted the next day and the next day we only get it from the foods that we eat and we're not eating the foods that help make those things like we need like hormones testosterone to make a healthy heart to make strong muscles or as we work out we tear down muscles and we rebuild them if we're not eating things like mackerels and brazil nuts and salmon and things that are high in healthy fats that actually make healthy testosterone for men and for women, how are we going to make that? Well, you could go to your doctor and get an injection. That's not the natural way to do it, is to eat the food so your body can make that. But what happens oftentimes is that we have been taught, oh, let's eat for pleasure, let's eat for fun, that looks so good, it comes in a package, and then we end up getting something called gallbladder disease. We talked about earlier, 20 to 25 million Americans have their gallbladder removed every single year, which puts people in a panic mode. They don't know what to eat, and I can't tell you how many times people come in like, man, my gut is still off, I had my gallbladder removed too. Two or three years ago, I still am not digesting food right. There's generally an underlying cause. We start removing dairy, we start removing processed foods, we go back to the very basics of nature, which is sauteed vegetables, very lean meats. We go back to fishes because they're very easy to digest. We eliminate hard meats that are digest, things are super fatty, and we go back to plant fats like chia and flax and hemp, avocado, olive oil, seeds, then nuts. So pumpkin seeds, chia seeds. Um, sunflower seeds and then nuts just to allow their body to start adapting and generally can start adapting you have to go back to the basics if you eliminate something in the process of the digestive tract but do know that your liver is there your liver makes all the bile that you need and the, the gallbladder is just a storage tank and it doesn't just squeezes it out a little bit when it needs it so it just is kind of like <laughs> squeezes it out into the small intestine to help emulsify the fats but if you have a big fat load especially after a fast and you still have your gallbladder or you don't have your gallbladder and you fast and fast for you know two or three days and then you have a big fat meal you have a bunch of eggs and butter and bacon or a big tuna salad with a bunch of mayo and a bunch of avocado and it's healthy fat you may have a little reaction because you turned it off that mechanism for two or three days and you then you just slammed it back on hardcore and then it says oh I wasn't ready for that and so just know you need to go slow and steady if you are doing fasting throughout the day and you are eating even healthy plant fast generally it comes from pe people eating more animal fast in a higher ratio just go slow and steady and it will actually allow your body to accommodate. So I'm hopefully I helped answer your questions here today on that. We touched a little bit on cardiovascular disease. I'm getting a lot of questions on that. LDLs, HDLs, particle size. And, and this is my last, uh, I had a lot, a lot of slides I was going to show you, but this is more exemplary of it. So we know that this is a normal cell. This is your blood cell. And again, we talked about LDLs. If they're small, they fall through. If they're big, they just bounce right through. And again, LDLs can be great. They're bus carriers. They carry your triglycerides. They carry homocysteine. They carry triglycerides. They carry some good stuff sometimes. But if they're too small, they fall down. The small ones can't carry it anyway. And then when too much dust falls down, it makes us too weak and heavy. And then you dislodge a clot and it ruptures and then that was ultimately causes a stroke so you want to make sure that your LDL count and you keep your placking down when you combine sugar with butter that's how you get the placking and that's how you get those tinier LDLs there are some genetic testing you can do I'm not going to go into that but to sum it up you want to keep your LDLs low you want to keep your insulin low you want to keep your HDLs high your vitamin D high your fatty acids high and that's pretty much the recipe to success and eat real whole foods so hopefully I helped answer those questions that you have here today on risk factors that you have for doing a 
keto or a low carb diet and your gallbladder or liver concerns again this is dr heather carden if you're watching on replay put replay down if you have some more questions drop them down below and i'll be checking back in with you have a super amazing day